hello uh, dear students uh, welcome back to our uh, session on refrigeration and air conditioning uh, till last class we were uh, discussing the air refrigeration system now let us uh, try to uh, discuss how we can apply this air refrigeration system or uh, air refrigeration system using air as the working fluid inside a aircraft or how we can go for a simple aircraft refrigeration system okay so this is a, here we are going to discuss a, a refrigeration system which we are going to design for a refrigerating an air, aircraft or bringing coolness inside an aircraft since aircraft is working uh, in a higher altitude already the air in the higher altitude is already cooled uh, why there is a necessity for uh, refrigerating an aircraft mainly because there are so many uh, systems uh, mainly electronic components then there are human beings inside the aircraft if it, if it is a passenger aircraft then there are a, a lot of uh, complex uh, electronic systems uh, then other controls then some other payloads etc if it is a uh, missile or a fighter aircraft etc etc so uh, all these will be giving out heat okay which if it is not properly removed it will it will uh, cause a very large amount of discomfort inside the aircraft so normally uh, the uh, uh, data is like this so for so normally for a passenger aircraft they normally require a, a refrigeration a refrigeration system of of about 8 ton 8 tr capacity okay and normally for a jet fighter uh, normally traveling at around uh, uh, 950 sorry uh, 950 km per hour if a jet aircraft fighter if it is uh, flying at a uh, around 1000 km per hour it needs a uh, cooling of about 10 to 20 tons of refrigeration so that is the uh, application of uh, refrigeration system to an aircraft so we cannot take a very large uh, or hefty or heavy uh, refrigeration system across a uh, about uh, on board a aircraft uh, it, it it will cost uh, the uh, it the it, it it is it creates additional cost mainly because of its weight so uh, we can use our simple uh, working fluid that is uh, atmospheric air itself uh, for uh, the for uh, creating this refrigeration and that is what we are uh, discussing pretty uh, in our uh, air refrigeration system okay so uh, here what we are seeing over here uh, it is a cross section of our uh, wings of our aircraft so we know uh, the jet engine or the engine of an aircraft is fitted um, at the wings of the uh, wings of an aircraft so what we are here what we see here is actually a cross sectional area uh, or a small cross sectional area inside the aircraft wing uh, near near to uh, the main uh, air uh, the aircraft engine okay so what uh, what here we are seeing is uh, uh, as the uh, aircraft is moving through the ambient air it is actually coming and hitting the ambient air at a very large velocity okay or in turn we can say like this the ambient air is coming and hitting the aircraft wing uh, wings at a very large velocity okay it is the uh, uh, the ambient air uh, which is coming and hitting the uh, aircraft wing uh, it, it will be suddenly getting stopped or it will be suddenly halted uh, due to the uh, um, the uh, due to the block exert, exerted by the wing that is actually the wings are the aircraft wings are actually blocking the uh, fast moving ambient air so the fast moving ambient air it will be uh, coming to a halt after after hitting the uh, aircraft wing so it is just like we are compressing uh, the ambient air using this aircraft wings so that is what is shown over here at the at the point one ambient air is coming and hitting the aircraft wing part okay where our uh, refrigeration system is kept so okay then uh, at the point two when the air uh, enters the point two or uh, if, if when the air is uh, passing through the point two, it is actually compressed by means of this uh, heating action by the 
uh, by our aircraft being hitting on the ambient air so we are calling it as a rammed air so what what we are here, what we see here is actually a rammed air ram ramming action means hitting action or uh, pressurizing action just like we ram uh, the, our our uh, packing soil or uh, so, uh, packing uh, mud around our uh, foundry uh, our our molding our molding in, in in our molding flask flask just like we uh, pack our molding sand in around our pattern just like that the ambient air will be uh, rammed um, uh, when when the uh, aircraft wing is hitting uh hitting it okay so this rammed air it is uh, passing through the for second uh, for the point two okay it is actually in a compressed state okay then this rammed air it is going to enter a it is a, it, it will be acted upon by a main compressor this main compressor it will be run by means of a gas turbine this gas turbine will be controlled by a combustion chamber so in your uh, um, compressible fluid flow uh, subject you will be learning a lot more about the gas turbine and working of uh, the gas turbine so as of now you understand that there will be a combustion chamber where some amount of fuel will be burned and as a result of which we can uh, actuate or uh, rotate the uh, shaft of a gas turbine it is this shaft of this gas turbine which will be rotating the main compressor okay so what is actually happening here is uh, this main compressor the the main parts of this uh, simple aircraft refrigerator system is the main compressor the gas turbine which is actuated by a uh, combustion chamber then followed by a, a heat exchanger or a simple cooler okay so inside this heat exchanger the air is, air is getting cooled then there is a cooling turbine like this okay then there will be a cooling air fan and uh, uh, immediately after this cooling turbine we are having the cabin uh, which is maintained at uh, the point six okay it, it is inside this cabin that is the payload the passengers uh, the various electronic equipments are kept so the air which is admitted to the uh, cabin it will be extracting heat from those uh, uh, areas or those uh, human beings uh, which need to be refrigerated or getting cooled okay so uh, the air required for refrigeration the air required for refrigeration it will be blood or it will be extracted in a small amount from the main compressor this bleeding of uh, uh, the required air or the uh, extraction of the required air for refrigeration is shown in the point three at the point three some amount of this compressed air we which is coming out of the main compressor it will be taken towards the heat exchanger so the uh, path of this uh, working fluid is like this from so actually it was uh, in the ambient that in the atmospheric air after the atmospheric air hits the aircraft wing it got uh, compressed or it got rammed and after and after uh, it is entering the main compressor the main compressor is again compressing uh, and pressurizing this ambient air it is this pressurized it is this pressurized uh, uh, air uh, it will which will be blood uh, from the uh, main compressor at the point 3 okay so this high temperature and high pressure air it will be cooled initially in the heat exchanger okay it will be initially cooled in this heat exchanger how uh, the uh, high temperature and high pressure air is getting cooled it has to reject the heat to some other uh, cooling medium so here uh, at a very high altitude we are dealing with an aircraft okay or a jet fighter so there we cannot employ, employ another uh, working fluid or cooling medium so here we are using the same ambient air itself okay so the atmospheric uh, air uh, which is present in the point two uh, we are taking a portion of it and uh, since uh, this uh, uh, po uh, air present at the point two is at a lesser pressure compared to the uh, uh, air which is coming from the main compressor okay since the uh, air at the point two is at a lower temperature and pressure it is 
very well uh, efficient to take up the heat from the com already compressed or highly compressed air which is moving from 3 to 4 okay so the whatever com uh, high temperature and pressurized air is coming out uh, from point 3 it will be rejecting that uh, high temperature or that uh, high heat into the same atmospheric air but coming from the point 2 okay so after taking the heat from uh, this compressed air which is coming from point, which is passing through uh, from 3 to 4 this uh, rammed air it will be getting collected uh, by a uh, cooling air fan it will be again rejected to the atmosphere okay so what is happening uh, uh, this, what is happening to the uh, compressed air coming from point 3 it is getting cooled when it is passing through the heat exchanger so that is why it is this section is called as a heat exchanger or a cooler itself this uh, this air it is further cooled okay this air which is coming out from the point 4 or out of the heat exchanger it will be further admitted to the inside of a turbine or a uh, expansion device normally uh, we consider turbine as a expansion uh, device where uh, some amount of work can be extracted okay so this uh, uh, air which is coming from point 3 it was in a high temperature and high pressure state but uh, after passing through the heat exchanger the temperature got lowered but the pressure is still at a very high value okay so this high pressure fluid or air which is passing from 4 to 5 while it is passing through the cooling turbine it will be it will be having the ability or it will be having energy sufficient enough to rotate the turbine blades okay the turbine blades and also the associated uh, shaft attached to the cooling turbine okay so this turbine work is uh, used in order to actuate the uh, in or in order to uh, run the cooling air fan which will be actually uh, attracting or it will it will be actually uh, uh, admitting the rammed air to pass through this heat exchanger and the uh, um, cooling down process takes place inside the heat exchanger okay so uh, when the uh, pressurized air is passing through the cooling turbine it do it does work or it uh, uh, reject the uh, extra amount of energy it has uh, to for the working of uh, cooling turbine so after passing out from the cooling turbine uh, the total energy total energy or the uh, high total pressure as well as temperature of the air which is coming from point 3 and passing through point 4 it will be very much lowered okay so uh, the uh, the air which is coming from 3 to 4 uh, it, it was already in a very highly pressurized state and it was at a somewhat high temperature also then uh, uh, first of all uh, the temperature got lowered uh, when, when the when the air was passing through 3 to 4 like this and pass through the heat exchanger and furthermore after doing this uh, uh, expansion work in the turbine on the turbine blades the working fluid which is nothing but there it loses out still further energy or its temperature will be further lowered and the pressure also will be further lowered so it will be finally a very cool uh, low pressure air coming out from this cooling turbine which can be easily admitted to our cabin at the six uh, at the point six or the cabin is the place where uh, the, our human beings or the passengers the various payloads the various electronic components etc etc will be kept and this cooled cooled air which is at a lower pressure which, which, which is at a sufficiently low pressure can easily take up heat uh, from that cabin so this is our uh, idea of uh, this simple aircraft uh, simple aircraft refrigeration system so so this is the basic uh, diagram showing the working of a simple aircraft refrigeration system now let us try to analyze uh, one by one what is happening uh, at the various stages of uh, um, this aircraft refrigeration system so now let us try to draw the ts diagram for uh, 
this uh, working of this um, uh, simple aircraft refrigeration system okay so the now let us discuss one by one so as you might have observed point one denotes the normal uh, atmospheric air or the ambient condition point two represents the rammed air ramming happens when uh, the high velocity or the high speed uh, 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 the high speed aircraft wing is coming and hitting the ambient air it will be actually compressing or ramming the ambient air so the point two is a result of this ramming action okay so uh, now let us represent this entire process in a ts diagram so uh, even though this uh, diagram looks uh, very uh, very awkward but this is a very simple diagram so let me explain uh, let me explain one by one so point one uh, denotes the ambient pressure or the ambient condition so this line is a constant pressure line denoting the ambient condition or the ambient pressure so from point one uh, the from point one the ambient air got compressed or got ramped so i think in the uh, some of, uh, in, a, in one of the previous sessions i have uh, denoted like this the easiest way to represent the easiest way to represent a compression process in a thermodynamic system is by assuming it as a isentropic process or adiabatic process okay so the easiest way to represent a compression process is by means of a adiabatic process which is very easy to represent and understand 